before the meeting gets uh, um, on what I, on the way, I, I wondered if um, just, I noticed the Zoom link is set aside up for three hours and I'm expecting you probably aren't, do you guys have a goal of just, it not, not it's not up to me. I just kind of wanted to be aware. Um, oh, you can't unmute yourself. Oh my gosh. What, uh, I, uh, there you go. I think that sounds awesome. good. Yeah, I'll yeah, try to. I did not see that in the design. That was certainly not something I intentionally put in the program. But this should no be a link. Problem. This should be a link. Um, well, I intended what I did for the trustees, and I want to do for you guys too is a link that's sort of universal. Um, oh, here's. Yeah, I was wondering why everyone's so quiet. <laughs> <laughs> like everybody's talking there's no sound um oh, okay thank you um yeah i think we've we haven't formally set time limits but i think no, no, we've no, of course. kind of informally been aiming for an hour yep. and a half or less well that was that was i'm glad that i always would have intended to create more time i think someone else set up the zoom link and i, I was like you want to have plenty of time but i don't think anyone's going to be pushing in at 10 o'clock and also I I uh, didn't I you know I, I just want to assure myself that that wasn't that wasn't uh, um, no. something you were you know and I, I just want to be aware how long I could bear in there. Yeah. Great. Okay. So I think we're still waiting on Jenna. And Teresa, yeah. Teresa, yeah. Okay. Can you guys hear me all right? Okay. Yeah, it's fine. Sometimes my volume gets really low. Yeah, and I noticed some of those gets. While we're uh, waiting on Teresa, I'm just going to put um, the link to the the viewable version of the feedback uh, survey in the chat. So in case I think people may have found it um, in the folder, but in case anyone didn't, it's there for when we talk about that later. So let me just pull up the agenda. All right. Great. So I think um, nice to see everybody. We're starting off with um, community comment. Um, and Ben, I saw. Um, thanks for for sharing uh, some info in an email. If anyone didn't uh, see that. Um, I think we'll later in the meeting, um, we'll have an opportunity to, to speak about um, the process and definitely take that into account then. Okay. And so Anna, how, how does a committee, do you know how a committee needs to handle correspondence? I went and looked at Vermont open meeting law. We're all going to um, know this so well by the time we're done with this committee. And it only mentions that any email correspondence or written correspondence needs to be made available to the public if it's requested. And that's any communication between committee members or the public and committee members. But I didn't know at meetings, like what you do when you get comments or comments, I guess, from the public 
over email how it needs to be addressed. I know the school board has a correspondence section and sometimes they read every letter aloud and sometimes they don't, they just say we got correspondence. So I don't know what the protocol is on that. Um, I don't know any official protocol. I think that's good to know that um, we, you know, that there could be a request um, for, you know, seeing information um, in emails that are sent and we should all keep that in mind. Um, I, I guess I would maybe, I, I would not propose reading the full length of, of anything, but I think if we're referencing something, we can summarize it um, just so that folks know what we're talking about. Um, and then if there is a, a request for more info, we can keep that in mind. Okay. Um, is the posting, so can't, um, posting description that needs to happen and then posting your advertisement that will be for the trustees next week. Lisa. Yeah. That the job description is ready to go, but um, I want to make sure we get the right description of it because our folder, you have to go into our folder and then create it in the folder. We have description draft for community feedback, and it's the latest dated one. So I just want to make sure we get the one that incorporates those comments that came through. Are we talking about two different things, though? I think Anna, unless I'm I misheard, are we talking about the job description or the job posting? first the description yes okay because when you said I it's ready to, to go i thought both. i didn't know we drafted the job posting oh, sorry <laughs> no okay no yeah um great so any any other comments or, or questions about the um job description or is everyone okay with um with that i wonder if we change the name on it so that it's clear what the final version is just in terms of organizing it in our folders yeah just kind of update the name maybe with tonight's date and say like final or what have some or something rather than yeah. for community input it makes it sound like it's still in process yeah i think we can definitely do that um i'm, I'm have, in there now if you want me to do that to the one that says for community feedback like Catherine mentioned do you yeah want, that would be great Catherine. final and then should i put tonight's date tonight sounds good great okay and it it's done with trustee feedback, so we can finalize it tonight. You know, I guess that's always my assumption is whatever we say is final is like our final recommendation to the trustees. But ultimately, I think okay. what how we deliver it is our final version. What happens to it after that, I would imagine, is in the trustees' hands. Um, okay. 15. And so then next um in terms of a, a posting i don't know very much about i think some other folks on the call have a, a better idea about um you know how this should be posted and and where it should be posted and what kind of versions of are we trying to do fully based? so there's lots lots of options for both and my my most recent has produced almost no results uh, that it's almost entirely on but that said, you know, we could put something in a, in a paper offered of $750 for one week. Um, so lots of options, but uh, electronic tends to be, I think, probably a better option. Yeah. Could I ask, um, Fern, um, I, you, you got candidates from beyond Vermont in the first process. So could you just mention where you advertised? We advertised to the state of Vermont job list. Um, also, um, a friend of the library was at that time, I'm not sure if he still is, it doesn't really matter. He was on a list serve for the University of Vermont. He posted there. We posted on the Upper Valley Front Porch Forum, the Tunbridge um, Listserv, and the Front Porch Forum. So, um, the candidates that we acquired from far and wide um, obviously looked at the Vermont ones, the Vermont uh, Library Serves. Jenna, do you know, is posting on Indeed, is that free? 
I think you can probably do it both ways. Your vis it's about visibility. So the larger your budget, the more visible it will be. Um, I've only ever posted with, with ads that cost, so I don't know the free option. Mm -hmm. I also post with LinkedIn. It's got to be tied to a profile. So I've used my own profile and that you can post for free. I've done it both ways or you can charge for that as well. But I'm sure it's again, how much your ad will be seen. There are some services um, that are free for nonprofits. And I don't know if municipalities and libraries count or if you need to be a 501c3 nonprofit because I know our nonprofit posts for free on Indeed. Um, and we've had the same experience that Jenna mentioned, almost zero responses from newspaper ads. And we get a lot from Indeed, but the thing I have noticed is maybe 75% or more of them are just not even remotely nearly qualified. Jenna, you might have a different experience, but they will be people who are just like randomly clicking apply, 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 apply. So we find we have to do a lot of weeding, but the 25% that are good matches are much better than the zero from the newspaper. But it does seem to take a little more sorting effort, at least in my limited experience over the past five years or so. Yeah, you can generally also set it up with the, with the questions or like the rule outs. So you can whittle it, whittle the 75% down a little bit where they've got to answer like 100% affirmative to these five questions or something. But that, uh, I don't, do we have a budget? Do we know the answer to that? Because if we're on free post, then I don't even know if those options are the same. To my knowledge, there is no budget. We, that's why we did all the free advertising. We've spent absolutely zero dollars. I, I think um, if we can, do our best with doing it free that would be ideal and I think I would you know if there are things like indeed that we can do for free even if it means a little bit extra work weeding out those um, inquiries that are not at all a match um, I think there's no harm in in doing that um, but I think that really ticking the box of um, those more local um, options is is definitely important so the the Vermont state jobs list, um, whatever was done on there before the front porch forum. Um, I would definitely add kind of more word of mouth um, options. So like the Tumbridge Facebook group, I don't know if there are other, um, I guess the, the Tumbridge list serve um, between those that seems to get a lot of people in town. Um, and then maybe also just thinking about like the same libraries that we reached out to for the job description um, just making sure that it's kind of shared with them. I think that, you know, librarians tend to probably know other librarians. Um, I can, I'm in school at UVM, I'm happy to um, share, you know, reach out to like someone in, in the library there and see if there's a, a contact um, or a, a broader list that, you know, a network that they're part of that they can share, a, share it with um, more as kind of word of mouth that way as well. Yeah. That would be great because UVM has library a library sequence of courses, so yeah. that would be great. Yeah, I can definitely um, reach out to someone in the library there that I've worked with. And uh, and I was curious about that too, just uh, how wide you would want to go, and if it would be worth, like Simmons in Boston has a um, has a li library program. Um, I think there's a few other schools in New England that I'm sure would post through their alumni networks. Um, just and, and I think probably for free, but um, if you wanted to do a regional um, announcement, uh, I can do a little research on that. And um, if not, that's fine too. Would it be it helpful hurt. at all to have a Google Doc with this brainstormed list of all these places that we can like check off or even put dates yeah. next to maybe a Google Sheet if it just says like the idea and then we can start sorting them out by who did what because I know like I'm not on from porch forum so I'll never be able to post to that but um like I can help with some other items that were on that list, but it might be nice to organize it. Do you want me to just pop one in the job posting folder? Yeah, that would be great. Okay, and I didn't take notes on all of that, so I'll need help populating it, but I'll set it up. Yeah, 
Okay. Yeah. If I could just say um, a reference I have here from the trustee manual, it does state that the Vermont Library Association, which they refer as the VLA, um, is linked to the New England Library Association websites. So if you went on the Vermont Library Association, which I've, I've done to look at some descriptions there, and you click on the jobs link, you can scroll through and see everything for our state. But that apparently is linked to other New England libraries, websites, you know, job searching. So that is, would definitely be the top of the list. Um, and the other reference that we pulled the, that the trustees referred to last time, where to post the job ad, um, the VLA job site, front page forum, library's website, library's Facebook page, and it does say local newspapers. But I know, Fern, in the minutes from back when you guys were doing the posting, it was a budget issue on the local newspapers. Actually, and, yes, quite, quite yeah. expensive to advertise in newspapers. So. And really, who's really, you know, looking for their job there. So, so I can pop that list, um, Kathy, on the sheet that you create um, that I just referenced there. All right, I just, I just created a shell for it, but it, it'll probably be after the meeting that I make it look a little, little better so that I can listen. And the local Tunbridge one, I don't know how many people get that one, but that's pretty good too. It's like a, it's like a mini front page forum <laughs> just for Tunbridge. Yeah, so. I think in terms of the newspaper, I think if we're hearing from, um, from Jenna and from other folks who have seen a uh, little to no effect from that. I think that's a good justification of not spending a significant amount of money on that. It, it, that doesn't seem responsible. And it seems like we've got a number of other good places that should be more successful for posting it. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes too, it, it would be something to check. It sounds like if we have zero budget and we wanna go free, but let's say we don't get all the applicants we want and decide to spend a little, sometimes, Nonprofits can get discounts, like I know you can in some of the local papers, but um, I don't know about the the bigger ones. Do we need to talk about um, the mechanism of actually applying? Um, I don't know what was done last time, um, but in terms of you know what materials does someone need to send? How do they actually um, apply? For this role and so if we're putting a blurb in front porch forum or something what are we directing them to would that be in what we would be drafting in the job description which we haven't i mean not the job description the job posting if there's application instructions in there i think yeah i think if indeed allows us to do it for free that might be one way to kind of direct everyone to that space and that will you know, let let them upload documents or um, we can set it up by email, but it, I think, yeah. In my experience of using Indeed, it's an email. So they're, they're directed to send their resume and cover letter to whatever email address you load in. Or I suppose you could use a, a snail mail address. Do you, Fern, what did you do for the last? Oh, I suppose we could look at the job posting that's in this we, folder. Well, we used the trustees email to for people to send their resumes and cover letters to the trustees is that email. is that email and I, again i could look this up but is that email a domain email account for the tumbridge library or is it like a tpl trustees at gmail.com or is it tpl trustees at tumbridge library.org you know what no, i mean no, no it's okay email yeah um so you'd have to send it to a person's email, someone on the hiring committee. Um, we could create a unless you create account a, that was yeah. like TPL director search at gmail.com or something. Yeah, whatever. Because okay. even if it's Indeed, it's still you still need an email address. Jenna, is Indeed anonymous though? Is it like the, the email addresses are hidden until you connect? Because I feel like we received them, but the person didn't actually have our email address. And then it's not until you were connected that you actually got to see each other's contact info. 
I think it's right, you know, where they say to apply, click here, it dumps right into my email. So they must see the email address. Yeah. And you and I may have used it differently and I, we didn't pay anything. So, but I think it was anonymous. Like the people didn't have, no one was able to like follow up with me directly um, until you connect. Once you connect, then you get each other's email accounts. Um, yeah. So that, it seems like a question, Anna, to whether or not to create, no matter what we need an email address, even if it's putting it into Indeed. I, I think having a, a Gmail alias that is just for this, I, I wouldn't want to, I don't know that any of us would want to put our personal email on it and um, routing it all through the trustees might be a headache for them. Um, so yeah, I, unless any of the trustees on this think Otherwise, I would say that we can set up a Gmail um, address um, that's just for this purpose. I think um, one thing I would probably not do is force people to have to go to Indeed because in order to go to Indeed to submit something, you need to have an Indeed account and not everyone is comfortable with that. They may be, and maybe you wanna say, well, you should be, but I'm like, I'm kind of lukewarm about Indeed. Like I, I like a lot about it, but I don't like some things about it. And I wouldn't want to deter someone from applying if they're a local mm -hmm. resident who just doesn't use Indeed. Um, but then they have an option. They can apply either way. Do we want to talk about what um, we might want submitted at that initial point? I think my initial, I would say like a resume and a, and a, um, statement of interest. Um, I, I personally think it's really helpful to get that statement of interest. I think it's really hard to put a resume into context without someone speaking about why they are interested in that job. So else? Anna, when you say a statement of interest, is that the same as a cover letter? Pretty yeah. much? Yeah. So statement of interest sounds nice. Yeah. A question that I have is, whether we're going to put the full library description, the job description in the ad, or the way it was done before was with a summary of, as Jenna mentioned, main headings, and then it said for a copy of the full job description contact, in this case, it was the board of trustees. So, I mean, well, I'm not gonna say how I'm leaning, but just thought it's a kind of starting point you know, what we want in the ad. When you're ready to start drafting the ad, I, um, we can look at the last one that was done that I think we had different iterations of it circulated, but there was only one, it's just, we had different files. Um, so that file is missing from the Google Drive that we created. I just searched in all the folders and it's not anywhere. So I don't know where it went. Um, but I also created a shell of a blank one with just sections. So we could kind of look at the old one and start drafting the new one. It could be almost identical or it could be different. Um, however, that works. But um, Catherine, I wonder if since the library has a website, could a PDF of the job description be uploaded to the website and you could say go to the website for more information, then there doesn't need to be an exchange back and forth, it can be kind of self service, if they want to see it, and that keeps the ad shorter, the posting shorter. That sounds great. I feel pretty strongly that there, it should be on the website if I were if I heard that their Tunbridge Library was hiring a director and then I went to the Tunbridge Library website and couldn't find anything about that, I would find that a little bit odd. So I think um, I think it definitely should be um, on, on the website there, yeah. I just added that as a posting location because I think we should consider it one too, that if someone goes to the website, they can they might not even know there's an opening. They might just see the opening there. It's 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 another source, a free source too. I have a question. Marcia. Yeah. Um, how are you going to handle references? Is that going to be asked for with along with the resume? What what I have um, done in the past is ask for it at kind of a later stage for more finalists. Um, I think that the reasons for that um, you know, one, if someone is currently 
employed and they don't want to be signaling to yeah. their employer yeah. that they're planning on leaving, that can be awkward. And if they're not moving forward, you know, you want to save them that, yeah. that conversation. Um, so I would say that that should be a, a later request for a small group of finalists. Um, Jenna, do you have? I agree. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I mean, some people will list it right on their resume because they, they just kind of have it all in one. But um, as a general rule, references, I would move on only the serious candidates and yeah. have that conversation with them when you're ready to start checking. So it sounds like if that, depending on what others think, it, references wouldn't be mentioned in the job posting then, that would be later on. So in the application process section, it would be the statement of interest or cover letter and, and resume, but not references. I think so. And then I think that's something that when you're um, interviewing candidates, you can give them a little bit of a preview of other, you know, if you're selected as a finalist, we will be asking for references or that kind of information. I think that's a lot of extra work to put people through if they're not going to be moving very far in the process. So the things that we need to do, we need to get the job description um, and application instructions um, on the website. We need to set up an email address that things can be submitted to um, and figure out how to give um, the rest of us access to that. Um, and then I think in terms of what's actually being posted on, if it's something like the listservs, um, I think, uh, you know, a, a relatively short description linking to the, the website with the full job description is what I would propose. Do others have ideas on that? I agree with that. And I actually thought the first ad was fairly well written and could just maybe add a few more of the headings to it. Um, but yes, yeah, just a short summary of the actual job posting, I agree. I just now found the link that Teresa sent to the um, part-time library director posting the previous one. Does anyone know what folder that's in or where that file is? I'm just trying to get it, at least get a copy of it. It can be a static copy over to the shared Google Drive. I just clicked on the link and I see Jenna and um, Sean are in it. Does anyone know what folder it's in? It doesn't look like it's in our hiring committee folder. Yeah, I just want to make sure documents are there. I just went to the link. A copy of it and move it. Should I just make a copy and put it in there? This we're not editing this one. This one's the static one, right? Because it's the old one. So I will just make a copy of it and save it in that. It's called old job posting, I think is the, the name of it. I don't know where it keeps going. I found it there, but can I ask a kind of silly question? So I'm sitting here and I'm doing the Zoom and if I'm on my laptop and if I try to go into the folder now, the Google Docs, what do you see? Am I still am I still on Zoom even though I don't see it? Yeah, we, we see still you. see you. Yeah. This is my camera's just doing its thing. Okay. Yeah. Don't make funny faces when you're reading things <laughs> and you, you don't see yourself. Frustration. All right, thank you. And uh, I did want to say, Jenna, I thought you made some good um, recommendations in the email you circulated about the headings, but also about the range in hours and benefit. I think that that will, um, it will allow people in their cover letter statement of interest to flesh out example, um, us see approaching it in the way. In that job, they're going to apply for it and discuss that based on what their qualities are. We're going to above eight. We had a couple of scenarios that were between 22 and 24. Okay. I'm relieved. Just, so, other yeah. things I did. But, uh, Teresa, can you step up here in terms of what are we offering? And I, I is it 22 to 24 hours? I mean, I know we had the scenarios. I feel like we weighed in, but I'm a little hazy. Teresa, you're muted right now. Unmute. Okay, there, there we go. go. Um, I'm not sure that I shared this. It had scenarios A and B, um, 
But really what I started with was um, the benefits. And if you go over the 24 hours, if, if your average timesheet is 24 hours a week or more, you the, the town treasurer has to take your retirement. That's the part of the package. Um, and so if you started a 20 hour a week, you would not allow the person to go over 23.95, you know. Um, so if we were learn, leaning towards the retirement, that's gonna put you right away at the 24 hours a week. If you want to go into what would be considered full-time, which would not um, occur any overtime issues, which was a concern, although it would have to be over 40 hours a week to go to overtime. Um, then you have to hit a, a price, a salary point, which is um, $684 a week. Um, so you would need the person to be working a certain number of hours at a certain pay rate to, to get to that point. So there's some decisions to be made. Um, and I could probably do better answering specific questions, I think. Um, but in terms of the budget that's already been put out there for the 21-22 fiscal year, um, the scenarios that I have worked all fit within what's considered a salary budget. And the only piece that you really can play with if you start looking at those higher hours um, is not having two assistants at an average of 10 hours a week because that money has to come from somewhere. Would it, um, I mean, I think there are really split practices on whether a salary or, or pay is listed in a job description. I've, you know, seen it both ways many different times. So do we feel like we should list anything in regards to the pay or um, do we think that it might be better to not list that and to make it more of a conversation um, with folks who, uh, who, you know, make it further in the, in the process, but know on our side, what is that actual kind of range? Mm -hmm. um, one of the, um, I'm just looking at my notes. One of the pieces I pulled from looking at those um, jobs that are on the state of Vermont association job site and some of the wording that I really thought was kind of left things open. Um, they just stated library director right in the title. They didn't go into part-time. And then further down, it referred to it as part-time. And then in uh, quote in parentheses, it said blank to blank hours per week. So that kind of leaves that open. And then uh, it worded it as compensation will depend on experience and skills. And they did in some of them give a range from a dollar figure to a dollar figure. But I think you could even leave out the dollars and just compensation based on experience and skill. I would think anyone applying would have some sense of, of what an hourly rate might be. Yep. Um, state average, I think is like $19 and 38 cents or something like that. So um, you guys can, I, I'd like to just um, make a case for the opposite um, in the sense that we know about how much is in our budget to be able to ask. And if we're advertising really widely and somebody, I think we have to be realistic in terms of what people are looking for. Like, would somebody consider moving here if they knew it was even our best scenario, 24 hours a week. I think we have to give them something to, to help them decide whether they want to apply. I mean, if we didn't know, I, I would love to leave it vague, but since we, we, we pretty much know, that's just, I think as um, an applicant, I would want to, be, to know where people's heads were, you know, an estimate, but one opinion. Could we go around um, and hear what everyone on the committee thinks? I think this is a six of one, half dozen of another. And it, I think it would be good to hear every voice. I can save mine for, for the end, but I definitely have a, an opinion. Um, I can go next. So I think um, I, I agree that there's not like one correct way to do it. Um, I think that it's definitely um, it's helpful 
for people to be able to see that uh, up front. But I think that it's also very common for it to be um, part of a, a conversation and in an initial um, interview. I think that that could, it could save us some time of not interviewing and meeting some people who are really great who then say, oh, no, no, I'm not you know, willing to do this for, for that amount. Um, I think that the cover letter is also a place where someone can um, kind of hint, you know, I'm, I'm moving to Vermont anyway, and this is kind of a great opportunity for me while I'm there versus someone who's maybe considering making a move for this reason. So yeah, I guess I don't necessarily um, have strong feelings either way. Uh, Sean, you wanna go? Yeah, I think my my preference or instinct would be to be very clear about the um, the hour, the expected hour, hour range. So the amount of work that the person is doing. I like the, the, for lack of a better word, the vagueness of the compensation is dependent on um, experience because then I think uh, it, gives the applicant the chance to, um, especially in their letter of intent, uh, it gives them the opportunity to uh, kind of sell themselves a little bit more, um, leaving it a little bit more open. Um, again, I, I do agree. I don't think there's one correct way, but I think um, it will, uh, uh, it will allow us to have some conversations that might get cut off by putting a, a hard dollar figure in, in the ad. Jenna, do you wanna share? Sure. Um, you know, I think for me, it comes down to perception and whether you, you put it in the ad and someone says, wow, that's low, I'm not gonna apply. Or you don't put it in the ad and someone says, oh my God, it must be so bad. They didn't wanna list it in the ad. You know, no matter what you do, job applicants are looking for jobs from very different perspectives. So for some, they want to know immediately just to apply. For others saying commensurate with experience will be enough for them and they'll apply. So, you know, I guess it's not, it's not like it's something we can avoid. It is what it is. We have a budget, we're not without limits. So if I had to pick my druthers, I'd probably say there's, um, I'd just assume put it in there to be right up front about it. Um, this is for me an easier conversation than whatever is going to come down the road when we start to figure out well what exactly does years of experience mean for whether it's 21, 22, 23, 24. And I don't know if we have any criteria from which to go by to say that five years experience equals a dollar an hour increase on the scale or a bachelor's degree equals 50 cents an increase or master's is this. You know, I think the, the long what I would rather not get into is the, the higher dollar figures go to the better negotiators. I think it's for me, it's not about negotiation. If we're really trying to base it off of skill and experience, we're going to need to figure out how that falls on a range if that's not already listed somewhere. Uh, Fern, do you have any feelings on this? Uh, yes, I pretty much agree with Jenna. I think we that there will be a um, dollar range and people up front will know that it's a part-time job and there's only so far you can go with with dollars on a part-time job and and that would certainly weed out people whose expectations would be vastly greater than than what we can possibly um give them thanks teresa Yeah, I, I, I don't have a problem with putting the, the dollar range in there. I think I'm a little more hung up on what are the hours going to be um, it part time. You know that that piece. Um, I also wonder and, and I don't know Fern how much and I'm kind of flipping between different things here, but even at anything over 20 hours a week as a town employee, you're getting a two person health care package and for the for the person the employed person it's 90% coverage and then you can either have a spouse partner type person or child and that's 70% coverage right 
that's, and that's not really, I, I'm kind of sidetracking a little bit, but um, just to be clear, that's not something that you can negotiate. Like if you're like, well, my husband has all the insurance or I don't need it for whatever reason. Um, we're, we're not, I'm not clear that we can put a dollar on that. Is that, do you, am I making that clear? It's not really, I'm not sure it's negotiable. I've tried to get an answer from the town and it, it's, it's, it's not really that cut and dry right now. So someone couldn't use that to up their salary. So I don't, I don't think that's possible, but no, but I, I remember no. Becky saying that they were still a little vague themselves. Um, yeah, and um, and, in, and yeah. talking to Becky, I think if you move to a salaried position, it seemed to get a little clearer. But then we got into: Does it count if you are a non-elected? If you're hired, or is it only for people who are appointed to positions? So I wouldn't get into that. Um, so whatever the salary dollar amount you set. I think it's just important that it's clear that that, you know, even if you choose not to take the, the insurance, which is um, a price point of 17,600, $17, I think, a, a year, um, you can't put that back in and say, well, I'm not going to take the insurance so you can pay me more. That's not going to happen. So whatever you put as the hourly rate within that window, and I'm looking at it now, our max is $24 an hour. That's no matter what scenario you go with. If it's 24 hours a week with two assistants and the custodian, or if you do a 30 hour week um, at $24 an hour with one assistant. Have you decided on two assistants? What was that? Um, that's going, new to me, the two assistants. Going off of the current timesheets, you have two um, people putting in for 10 hours or 10 to 12 hours a week. Well, we're in a unique position right now. Yeah. But normally it's just the uh, administrator and one assistant and we farm out different activities that we have going on and those are usually sponsored by the friends. Mm -hmm. So that's something to think about budget wise, whether you're going to need two part-time assistance. Sorry, can Ben's yeah, got I was just wondering how much of, uh, I don't know if you can hear me. Yep. I was just wondering how much of this um, discussion is really like board discussion because you you have a you have a flexibility to put put an offer out there but what the librarian the library director chooses to do after that um and how they decided what help they need now for the hiring committee whether or not to post we're drafting the job description. So the conversation we're having right now is whether or not to include a salary range or wage range in the posting. But a lot of what Teresa is bringing up is like Ben said, probably trustee conversation. Yeah. But in order to draft the job ad, we're trying to decide whether or not to put that sentence in of the, 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 the range. But really the trustees are going to be approving the ad and they need to approve if the range is going to be in there, that range. And then they have some questions to consider um, that some of that has to happen after the director is hired and makes those decisions, but there's budgetary constraints for how many hours and how much pay the director um, can be negotiated for. And it seems like the trustees would really need to be a part of that conversation. But for right now, we're trying to draft the job posting and decide whether or not to put that in there. It's just bringing up a lot of other um, related topics. So what are, would we be putting in the number of hours then, or is that at hours and, or do you leave that open too? Can, before we move forward, um, Kathy, do you want to add anything about your thoughts on, on including a salary range or leaving it blank? Sure. Thank you. Anna. I, um, everything everybody said I think is has been going around in my head I for many years was dead set against putting the salary range in I think for I think there are pros and cons 
Um, but recently I have, de I have definitely been persuaded because the, the HR research shows that it's the very first thing people look for in job ads. And so it's said that near 70% of applicants can be dissuaded from applying for your position if you don't list it. So that's just like a hidden thing, a hidden con that you don't really know because they didn't apply. Um, and what we have found, I think, which was kind of what made me, which is more visible, is when we don't put it in ads, people try to find us and they call and ask. They will, and I don't know, like if the library's had that experience, but the library is a public institution. That the salary for both of them says $20 an hour. Like I was thinking we had, you know, a, a $24 an hour range, but I think it's the, the uh, hours that are the 22 to 24. And now I'm a little confused about, do we have a range of salary? Yes. C Catherine, can you tell me what document you're looking at? I'm just trying to keep up with when people reference things. Oh, your, your, mic your microphone is off. Um, I've got it in hard copy, but I think it is in our folder, but I will okay. take a look or Therese will recognize it because it's yep. hers. It's called library director, hours, salary benefits. Okay, got it. I just found it. It's the first time I'm seeing it. Thanks. I'm sorry. I'm just swimming in Great. Google Docs. I wasn't sure what was what, but now I see what you're looking at. Thank you. Great. To answer your question, Catherine, um, I just used the $20 figure because an hour because that was kind of where it was when I picked it up. Where you know what what the budget because I was working with Eve with the budget piece, um, but <clears throat> it uh, it can go as high as $24 an hour. I haven't Wait. done any math higher than 24. Okay. Okay. Um, but that was considered the you know the high the high end of the range and with that math and the the current which and and the only reason I reference the current is because I'm just going on the current budget that we're spending on um, staff and with the current staffing as it is today the timesheets that are going in today it's 24 hours a week at $24 an hour fits the budget. So if you're making the adjustments with those okay. with the other positions, then I would see your your room going into hours, not the rate. It can still be twenty four dollars an hour, and the hours can go up if they need to. So our rate is twenty to twenty four dollars, and as people have been saying, we have to be clear on what makes the difference for us mm -hmm. in terms of what we are um, offering based on the candidates. Yeah, and one further clarification on this really good question: the range is commensurate based on skills, experience, education, all those kinds of things. But the number of hours stays the same. But sometimes as in the case of an operations manager that we just hired at our office, she negotiated a slightly higher wage in less hours so that the dollar amount was exactly the same in our budget, which that took a lot of negotiating. We had to talk about that, but the if you see what I mean, there's two different things there. You have a salary range that can go up and down and you have hours that can go up and down and they can go up and down together. So I think, I don't know if that makes sense, um, but you may end up getting less hours out of someone and paying them more to stay within your budget or you can get more hours out of someone if you pay them a little less, if they have less experience. Uh, but that's not a budget savings. That net amount is the same in your budget. If So I'm not sure what, like what, you know, what the the range is going to be posted in the ad, if it's a range of hours and a range of wages, and that's just all negotiable. That's what we were headed towards. And I think because those two can move independently, I, I would, um, I would vote for, you know, having a range for both um, and putting off some of that until we're kind of seeing who, who those finalists are and rather than having hypothetical conversations, we can actually really think about like, what should this look like for them? Are there hard limitations on their time? You know, do they want more hours or fewer? Um, going back to that range, I, um, and I'm, I'm very happy to, to easily be talked out of this, but a potential reason to keep in a bottom floor of 18 is, you know, even though if our goal is to hire someone who, 
is worth minimum, you know, 20 an hour. And we really are not looking to hire someone who we don't think um, qualifies for at least kind of $20 an hour, um, having a, a lower range of 18 um, might kind of frame that better because I, I, you know, no one wants to be hired at, at the lowest range. And I think kind of saying, you know, 18 is technically maybe the limit, the lower limit. Um, but it, we don't, you know, ideally we're going to hire someone who's in that, that upper part of that range. That would be the only reason to potentially keep that in. I don't know how people feel about that. Another reason that I was wondering about is I think I saw on another library's job posting somewhere that it said like master of library science is preferred or working towards it. And I just wondered if sometimes you might hire someone at a lower, if the state average is $19 and you hired someone at 18 because they didn't have those qualifications but they were working towards it, they could get a wage increase as they work on it. Um, like, I don't, I'm just putting that out there. Sometimes you might have the perfect candidate who just doesn't have the education or experience, um, but they're working towards that and you can increase their wage sooner than you might. I don't know if the library has the ability to do that, but it's another reason to maybe keep a lower end in there. Okay, I'm going to look really uncooperative. This is not my nature, you guys but I don't like keeping the 18 in there. I feel like it's a little insulting. Please and I feel get like it's- it. Get rid of it. <laughs> I feel like so it makes it- So <laughs> It makes it look like maybe we don't take our, li our library and our librarians seriously enough. Because 18 in the world of library work, no, is more of an assistant. No. Okay. So I really appreciate what you said about, you know, making it look like somebody's look that serious as good. It doesn't make us look as good as we are. You know, we are a really wonderful library and anyway. So do you know so, um, whoever said the average before when I heard the average was 19, I actually thought that was pretty low and the 20 to 24 sounded high. I don't, I don't know. I haven't looked at the data, but does anyone know what the median is? Because there's a big difference between mean and median with wages where you can have you know, people at all ends of the spectrum with degrees and experience. So, I mean, that's when I heard 19 was the average, that means that half of the library directors, not half, see that that would be median to, to know what half were below and half were above. So I would just be curious when we do um, salary data with you. 20, anyone feel differently? 20 to 20. Here for 20. Do you, do you also know if the 90% like health benefit, 90% dependent, 70% coverage and all those benefits, if those are on par, like are they competitive too or are they ab above average? Um, just in looking at the whole compensation package. It's a great question, Kathy. It sounds great. Doesn't it sound like a really generous package? I, and now it offers an extremely it's, generous package for part-time employees. Amazing. They're that's really yeah. outstanding. That's a, right. I, to, in my experience, I just received a copy of the Vermont and the New Hampshire nonprofit salary surveys. I don't think I even saw 90% for part-time listed um, really for nonprofits. Libraries and municipal are going to be seen as a, a bonus. Um. I thought we did not see that. It was a treasure and I was and in a phone conversation, and she was like, "Yeah, it's good, isn't it?" And I said, "That is good." Um, it's two weeks um, sick pay up front for the year, and then your um, your vacation is what occurred. I feel like I'm currently there. So you you've adjusted up that you've got to hire you know, someone at the minimum of whatever you listed. So if we're comfortable with the minimum now being 20, 22, whatever your pin number is, whoever applies, you're going to be, you know, we're going to be in a position of saying, so I'm a little unclear on, are we paying someone based on hours that they put on a timesheet or is it a 22 to 24 hours a week? And you're going to have one assistant or two assistants, whatever the, the mantra is, is a salary by two weeks paycheck, same or which is hourly. So it's information, and you're not setting the hours and they're putting in, 
The answer is, um, and this is for the, um, the uh, Fair Labor S uh, Standard Act, mm -hmm. and the earning threshold necessary to be exempt for an executive um, is, and there's a dollar figure. And the only way I got the person up to that dollar figure is if I paid them $24 an hour for 30 hours a week. Right, so that's the executive exemption, but there's professional exemptions as well based on education and who you're supervising. So in my understanding of this job is it's exempt either way. You're supervising staff and you were requiring uh, education and experience to do this job. So I guess that's- I, what asked, I asked that yeah. same question in um, Jenna, I think it was at a trustees meeting and they said, no, they were, it, this sounded to me like an exempt position that should be salary, not hourly. Right. But and right. I thought the answer was, we were told by the town that we had to change this from a salary to an hourly position. But I've, I've not heard of like a, an individual with a degree hiring and supervising staff who's working hourly on a timesheet. But, but I didn't know if municipalities had different Fair Labor Standards Act provisions. It's a, it's a federal law, it's not a state law. So I, well, I know I nonprofits that. have some, like depending on the type of employer you are, some Fair Labor Standards Act, um, like rules about volunteers and different things um, vary, but I, I wasn't sure about municipalities or a library. The, this was explored at a trustee meeting, like I'm sure Fern probably remembers better than me, is it felt like I'm not sure. Yeah. That's, so that's where, yeah, I, I, I don't have anything to contribute other than that was definitely the trustee to go ahead, Fern, go for it, sorry. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was the impression that we got from the information from uh, the town, from Becky. Um, if perhaps if um, she could explain it to say Teresa, who is going to be the treasurer or she, you are their treasurer. I mean, you're elected um, to take over um, at the end of the month. Um, if Becky could explain it to you um, in, as to why it has to be hourly um, to satisfy uh, you know, any questions that we go forward. Well, then maybe we just accept that it is what it is. And I don't, you know, it doesn't need to be explained so much as long as we're clear that this, we are truly treating this like an hourly position. You know, we're truly saying that that's what it is. There is no salary, it's not a salary job. So the person really is then, you know, the expectation is they're paid for all of their hours. And that's that's a conversation to have up front for depending on how people's work habits are and efficiencies and how much time they want to put into something. You know, if we're saying this is 22 to 24 hours, and they're saying I can't do this job in less than 30, look at the job description. Holy cow. You know, like this is really then that's the only I will ask that question. It was at first, but I was just concerned about the job description, how big it was. And I felt like fundraising wasn't quite detailed in that. And so the answer was kind of, oh, they can delegate that to other staff. So I think an hourly position for a director who's hiring supervising staff in charge of some development activities. I think if I were applying for the position, I might question why it's hourly and not salaried. So I think it might be worth getting something in writing from Becky or the select board or guidance from the state, um, maybe even the Department of Labor, um, just getting some guidance on that because candidates could question it. I, I don't know if I would apply for an hourly director position that supervises and hires staff. Um, it just to me sounds uh, unusual. So I just think that the hiring committee, since we're going to be putting out a job posting and collecting applications, we might want to have something concrete that describes what that parameter was to make that decision so we can respond to applicants if it comes up. And then maybe it won't. I just want to share that it was emphasized to me throughout the continuing education for library certification that a librarian was not supposed to be involved in fundraising. Um, and I don't know, maybe, so I'm just saying that's, that was a professional standard. I mean, maybe if they're printing off stuff, the trustees want, but it's the trustees within the library budget, the friends outside, maybe not just be to be more like probably has good answers to that. So. I agree with Ben. Um, traditionally our friends and our trustees are the fundraisers. 
Um, so for the sake of um, time, um, I think at some point, I think there is a great benefit in all of us having a better understanding of this. And um, Marsha and Ben, it's actually been super helpful just to have you both here today um, because I've learned a little, quite a bit already from you both um, about the way that the library operates now and, and um, previously. So I think we should in the future make sure that before we're interviewing candidates, we all kind of have a good understanding of this. Um, it sounds like for now we should go forward with the trusting the conversation that happened previously about this being an hourly position um, and Teresa and, and um, other trustees, if there's anything that comes up that maybe hints that we should revisit that conversation, please let us know. But I, I think based on what we know right now, it sounds like we need to go ahead with it being hourly. Um, do we feel like we have... Sorry. And if I could just, um, a final note on that, I popped over to the chat um, a link that I received. I maybe post then that by March 1st, the posting is up. Um, but that can be kind of a goal that it's up, it's shared on networks, it's sent out you know, as, as broadly as we want it to be. Um, and then I'd love some guidance on, you know, is one month of having it up, is that reasonable? Is that too short? Um, I think we were shooting for a month. I think. So April 1st then as a deadline for when we're asking for um, applications and, and responses. Um, and then maybe since we're running a little bit short on time tonight, maybe the next time we meet, we can um, talk through more of the different stages after April 1st in terms of reviewing how many stages of interviews we want, what the timeline might look like for those. I have a question on that application timeline. Yeah. Um, in my experience, folks are applying for jobs and hoping to start pretty quickly. So I guess I'm wondering if are we saying we would then not start interviews until the month has gone by? Or are we gonna interview candidates as they come in? Because I would hate to have a candidate apply early and then we sit on that resume for three weeks. And by the time we call them, they're like, sorry, I took a job somewhere else. So mm -hmm. I, you know, a month for me is a long time. Like I, I would run it for most jobs for a week. I get a pretty good batch of candidates and, and interview them immediately and move fast because candidates are accepting jobs quickly. I think um, when Jenna, I had similar thoughts. My thought was about putting the April 1st date on because then you have this sensation that you can't start interviewing until after April 1st. But also, you know, it's kind of like the whether or not to put the wage. Um, do you say, does the committee just say this looking is open until the filled in date on it? Because we talked first week, but also Jenna, like you're a human resources employee paid in a position working this is a committee. So I think we also have to kind of be realistic. Like, can we actually interview applicants as they come in? Are we going to, do we have to warn those meetings? Are those, they're not public? I don't know how that works um, for interviewing because this is a committee of volunteers who most of, some of us probably work during the day and are only available in the evening. So I don't know what that would look like the timeline for, can we jump on an applicant and interview them right away? Um, how does that work with a committee? Would it be reasonable to give like a preferred deadline and maybe make that March 15th? Um, so that would be at least two weeks, but then also say that it's open until filled? I think the one piece of community input I'm remembering from the last posting was there was some concern over only having a two week window for a very small town, a very small library, a small position. And I remember there were comments saying, you only had that posted for two weeks. Um, that wasn't enough time. So I would, I would, I'm, I'm not gonna push on this and I'm not feeling stubborn. I would leave the date off. And that way you can pull down ads, you can keep putting ads up. It doesn't make you feel like you have to wait until a certain date to do things. It just gives the committee flexibility, but yeah. someone else may have a reason why you do want a date on there. So I would be a downside off. to not having a date. Um, I'm 
in referencing the, the another source here with hiring a new director, it does say give candidates several weeks to apply. And if the ad draws too few applicants or ad inadequately qualified ones, then you can revise your ad, you know, spread it a little further. Um, I, I personally would like to see it maybe not have an end date to position is filled if that's if that's legitimate. Because <clears throat> then we could start the process, you know, as Kathy said, what you know, time is yeah. is um, you know an issue for for getting the group together and and meeting the bylaws and and those things. Um, but at least start bringing the applicants in. And if you are a serious job searcher and you see jobs, you're going to be applying. Um, you know, if you maybe didn't quite catch it in the first week or two, because the last one was a two week window. Um, it was up and down in two weeks. So I think even leaving though, it up there. Even, it even, though I, even though I mentioned the committee needing time, I do think what Jenna said is so, so important that you need to jump on candidates quickly because they can and but hiring committees, I think, just slow the process down versus having a person, one individual who's responsible for all of that. Um, but we definitely saw that with the Tumbridge principal position last time. I believe the hiring committee made two offers to people who were long gone. They accepted other positions because the committee was taking so long um, and they lost some good candidates. They ended up with a great one too. Um, I think that was two times ago, but committees slow things down. So it's really important what Jenna said, but at the same time, there's that reality of how quickly can we, we pull that together for an interview. So is there any downside to saying that it's open until filled and then knowing within us that we're gonna you know, make sure that it is, um, up for several weeks, even if that, even if we're starting to interview um, some candidates earlier on that timeline. Did someone say the position is still posted at the Vermont Department of Libraries, like it was never taken down? It was. Um, I checked uh, about a week and a half ago, and it was still on. Have there been any applications generated by that since October when that closed? No. I don't know if it's dated. I don't know if it says October 15th or- It is dated. It oh, is it's dated. dated. It okay. says by October 16th. Okay. Yeah. So if someone looked at it, they would know it was old. Okay. So, okay. So we, um, if we get the posting approved February 22nd, um, we should be able to then get that up within a week um, at, on all the various platforms, hopefully even within just a few days, um, but pending people's um, schedules. And between now and February 22nd, we can fill in that, um, that sheet that Kathy started and um, maybe uh, enter point people for each um, uh, way that it'll be posted so that we can be ready to go as soon as we have the okay for that. Um, and then saying that it's open until filled uh, and that we would potentially then start um, doing interviews, um, you know, maybe as early as as mid March um, when we start to see applications coming in. And I think in that case, we should proactively, we should assume we will get some great applications early on, and we should hold some time um, on our schedules to to do that. Um, and maybe then a, a question there is, what is the first round interview for that? Um, is it everyone on the committee? Um, and then is, do we wanna talk through right now what the other stages might be? Should, um, I guess I have a question on who is going to set up that email alias and collect, or it's not an alias, it would be an actual email account and collect those and then should we have a standing meeting time slot that we could potentially interview people on like mondays at seven except for the night the trustees meet i i don't know it's just one idea and we don't need to use it if we don't have applicants um and then my other question i had earlier was does it need to be warned or public or how do we talk about applications can that be completely over email is there, what are the privacy concerns or the requirements for posting that? I know that interviews with candidates, that's 
can be done in an executive session and does not need to be an open meeting. I don't know if that still needs to be warned in the same way. Uh, I need to go back and look at that FAQ. Executive meetings do not need to be warned. Okay. So if we're meeting just for the purpose of doing interviews, that doesn't need to be warned. But if we're having time to discuss anything else, it, then it would need to be. So uh, then what about reviewing applications or do we just do that over email? Um, I, I would propose that we do kind of a, an initial um, review uh, remotely and, and then maybe have some time. Um, I, I would think that also talking about applicants would, would be an executive session. So it's it's definitely something to figure out because what happened in October was, you know, the community felt like someone was offered a position, but nobody, it was mysterious. They, you know, there wasn't a meeting warned, but it sounds like Fern is saying an executive meeting, an entire executive meeting doesn't need to be warned. I thought you had to warn a meeting, go into executive session and come back and take action. Yes. Like yes. That. I'm sorry. Yes. That's okay. Me. So. Yes. I believe you need to warn the meeting, but then you can go into an executive session and I think- To do the discussions, yes. I think that was part of the criticism is that there was some thought that someone might've been offered a position, but that action was not taken in a public warned meeting. So we could talk about this after February 22nd or maybe even at the February 22nd meeting with the trustees. I just wanna make sure we nail that and like do it right so everybody feels really comfortable with how we did it. And if we need to provide documents or show things, we can do that um, because I think that is kind of what led to the weeks and months long process of dealing with those violations. I'd like to um, make a suggestion um, and I'd be glad to facilitate it. If, if the uh, committee members want to generate a list of questions that they have, um, the questions that you're now circulating, Maybe we could reach out to the, um, to, is it La Lara uh, Fern, the, uh, the manager right. consultants for the libraries? Do you think that that would be appropriate to run those questions by her? You mean questions to ask the applicants? Is that what you're asking? No, questions for the committee to address um, the interviewing process to the librarian, to the, to the uh, it's it Lara? Lara yes. Keenan? Lara, Lara Keenan, yeah. Lara Keenan. Could um, we ask her specific questions, let her know where we are on the committee? Because I know we reached out to her and she was pleased that the committee was set up and she gave some initial guidance. Could we follow up with her um, with some of these specific questions? Of ab absolutely, absolutely, so if yeah. If committee members want to um, email questions, I would glad to um, compile them. I, I, and then it, I prefer it to come through the trustees. Okay. Um, the questions to her and then, mm -hmm. you know, you being a trustee, of course. Yes. Myself, um, the, the question should come from us, not from generally um, committee meeting uh, members. Well, I, I just wanna say, I, I, I wouldn't expect her to be an authority on open meetings because her reply about whether committees actually needed to have, obey open meeting law was not correct like she, she didn't know the answer and the answer was right on secretary of state's office website uh, so if it's if it's matters of public meetings i would be cautious to rely on her as an authority i um, yeah i disagree with you ben on that she was very forthcoming and on what the open meeting laws were oh fern fern but that agenda item ended up taking a different direction um and maybe i witnessed it differently than other people did um, but i was a little confused by that so i wonder if before we conclude the meeting we can kind of do what we did last time and then kind of see that through because I think at the end of our last hiring committee meeting we agreed that Anna was going to present something but then that's not what happened and she only had like a couple minutes left to present it at the end so do we know 
is it just going to be if we're the only agenda item is it a free for all and that doesn't matter or should we identify who is going to present what part and of course we're all there and we can all talk about it i was just confused by what happened at the last yeah. meeting i think if jenna is is um taking charge of finalizing the text for that i think we should let her um lead with with sharing the posting and um and then we can maybe just uh, very briefly summarize, these are some key decisions that we made that were including, you know, range for hours, range for salary, and we're saying that we're going to leave it open until filled um, and that we will post it as, as soon as we have approval um, from the trustees, but I'm all for keeping that meeting short and sweet. Good. Fern, do we okay. know how that agenda is going to be drafted for the for the special meeting on the 22nd? Yes, I'm going to draft it this week and send it out to the trustees for additions or whatever. As far as I know, it's that's the only thing on the agenda. Okay. It's the only reason to have the meeting. Right. Do we is there an expectation of the community input process being started? at a certain time within the hiring? Because I know already now, like the community input isn't really informing the job description because we just finalized that and it isn't really informing the job. But you can fill out the survey and or you can come to this listening session. Um, if we can make that all work, that might just feel really good. Yeah. Okay, so I'll take the lead on. Um, give, let me know if anyone has final feedback on the survey. Um, otherwise, I can take the lead on on starting to post that and, and we'll coordinate over email if there are folks who have other places where that can be posted. Um, and I'll, um, before it's posted, I'll figure out how to um, set up another Zoom um, link for a uh, community listening session um, and get that uh, warned um, as, a, as a committee meeting, even though it won't really be a meeting style meeting. And Anna, you might've said it, but when do you want feedback on the survey form by? Um, as soon as possible. Um, I mean, I guess by by the twenty second at at the latest. But if okay, that's more. I was thinking, like, do I have two days? <laughs> yeah. So okay, good. Yeah. All right. Okay. Any final comment? Okay, I have some homework I have to do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Good have night. a good evening. Good night, everyone. Okay.